Hi, welcome back to the Gap Search Channel. My name is Gabby. I'll be talking today about uh, this is part two of the ultimate DAC uh, that you can build. You can't even buy anything like this, regardless of price of this quality. I just want to update you all on this uh, uh, DAC build that's been uh, going on for quite some time. I've been waiting for some parts, uh, um, specifically the four transformers to uh, get this build going. Uh, I would like to say that uh, I, if you haven't watched part one, I'll put a link below on uh, it talks a lot about all the parts and what, what they are and stuff like that. Uh, but this video is going to be the update of uh, what's going on. Uh, those, uh, this deck we, I cannot build by myself. This is based on the beautiful work of Ian Kanda that's designed and built all these beautiful boards uh, that help us build a system like this. Also Ivan who have designed and built those uh, four transformers. Uh, and various parts that you can buy from the uh, free market, like the ultra capacitor, the Raspberry Pi that this whole deck is based on, and so forth. Uh, so, yeah, so I would like to update you a little bit. So I've been, uh, uh, last time I saw you, we built the, uh, the deck, but uh, we're still in bits and pieces, so this time it's put together. It's still in prototype stage, so this is not finished but it's almost there. Uh, we'll just have to start putting it together in a nice case of some sort. So the things that uh, been developing since last time is I actually uh, put together the ultra capacitors with the uh, UC Pure uh, boards from in Canada. And uh, in this design, I've got three of them. Uh, in the final design, there will be five, and I'll explain that later. Uh, also, so the heart of the system, as you all know, is a Raspberry Pi, and it's right here, you can see it, and that's what we call the dirty side, and then it goes into the side here through the FIFO Pi and um, a dual mono uh, DAC, uh, and then it goes into uh, four transformers. Uh, and that's and goes as XLR and then into the uh, preamplifier. Uh, what I would like to, uh, I will show you in details in the video how I put together uh, these parts if someone wants to do that uh, for themselves. Just bear in mind working with uh, ultra capacitors has a lot of danger. These hold so much power that if you short some, uh, you could have a huge arc that could melt metal. And so it's very important or cause explosions. Uh, you really do not want to short these in any way or form their extremely massive power bursts that they can generate. Uh, so please do that at your own risk. Um, so I'll show you how I put all these together. In the last video, I had uh, Ivan's uh, small uh, transformers. I put a link uh, for Ivan's below. And uh, so the four transformers are the ones that basically bring, uh, separates the sound that's coming from the uh, uh, DAC board that goes to the preamplifier. And it helps protect the uh, preamplifier from any um, uh, DC power that could come out or any other surges. The reason I've been waiting for a while, the previous uh, four transformers I got from Ivan, I think unfortunately one of them 
could have got bumped in the mail. Uh, sometimes they drop those things violently. And uh, inside, one of the transformers was rattling, so there's something broken in there. It did work, but I didn't trust it. And also, one channel didn't seem exactly like the other one. So uh, I did contact Evan. He was extremely nice and very helpful, and he was uh, straight away offered to even to send me a replacement, even though it's not his fault. Um, and uh, then we decided, uh, well, let's uh, decide, let's upgrade to the to the bigger transformer. He's been uh, doing those for a little while now. He just came up with this new board that is uh, passive and also can be active. Because I've tried the active uh, uh, four board from Ian, and it was really good, and I loved the sound. And I was comparing it to the transformer. It wasn't exactly, it was good, but I wasn't super happy with it. Maybe because it wasn't functioning right, I wasn't sure. So I thought, let's upgrade to this board, and I'll have an option to go active or passive uh, with uh, pure transistors, which is a really good, good option. So I thought we'll, uh, we'll do that. I am uh, very happy with the four transformers. I think we got uh, good sound. And uh, one thing with the bigger transformers versus the smaller one that I definitely could notice is uh, is uh, better very low frequency. Like I'm talking below 40 hertz. And you can see is a little bit more uh, bass in that. Uh, frequency range is a little less loss of bass because with four transformers you tend to lose a little bit on the very lowest of frequency and sometimes on the highest but mostly on the lowest and I noticed with the larger transformers was a little bit of a better improvement uh, in that regard. By the way if you ever want to test a uh, your bass uh, uh, on your speakers and how low it gets uh, this uh, track from, by, uh, from Bass I Love You, uh, Basstronics, and uh, it's really, uh, really good to really pinpoint uh, your bass. Uh, Jay mentions once uh, on his channel about this, uh, this particular track about testing bass, but uh, I never really, I tried it and I was like, I was trying on a vintage speaker that don't go below 40. And I was like, oh, I don't know, like, what's so special about it? Like, I'm not hearing anything <laughs> different. And then uh, but when I built my uh, GS11 speakers and these guys go down to 20, uh, I could sure see, feel the difference and the uh, windows were shaking. And uh, it's uh, when you play the track, it's between 12 and 18 seconds, the first, I mean, it's first bass all along, but between 12 and 18 seconds, there's a little area where it dips down to, I think, somewhere close to 20. And uh, if your speakers don't, don't play that low, you will not feel it. But if they do, uh, and if you blast it at very high volume, uh, you'll see things shaking in your room. And, uh, and that's one way for me to test uh, if the speakers are are going this slow, and with those transformers, that information did not get lost, uh, and that's. But I mean, we're nitpicking here. Most speakers do not go down below 220, and um, but you want to be able to, uh, at least with a subwoofer, at, hear that frequency if you want, if you can. If your setup is not geared to go below 30, 40, then I wouldn't worry too much uh, about it, even probably down to 30. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's nice. That's one thing I noticed about those uh, large uh, transformers. Uh, I'll put links about all these parts again one more time below. So please, you know, if anybody's lost, what the hell is he talking about? Just uh, you don't have to worry. I'll, I'll be putting links about everything. Uh, below. So thanks Jay for mentioning this track on one of your videos. It really helped me uh, with uh, uh, figuring out a base on quite a few setups. Uh, if you guys haven't watched his channel, he's got an excellent channel. It's hard to miss. 
and just full of information. He's an extremely knowledgeable uh, person. Uh, let's get down to the sound, what everybody probably wondering. How does this thing sound? And uh, uh, in a nutshell, I've been a being it between my uh, Denafrips uh, Terminator and also my uh, was running on my streamer and uh, versus this uh, DAC and uh, they're very very close uh, I've still uh, I like them both uh, there's not a huge difference in sound uh, so the quality is way up there is it better I don't know yet uh, I still haven't completely finished I would like to get this thing perfectly dialed in before I do some critical testing, uh, A-B testing like this. But I've been listening back and forth and I've tried it with the PS Audio uh, compared to the PS Audio DAC. Uh, there's a lot more air in this DAC uh, and the imaging is really good. Everything is really good. So I'm really, it's really high up there. So uh, yes, it is an excellent DAC. Uh, you will have to, uh, at the final stage, you'll have to get different people to listen to it because I'm a biased. I've heard the sound, so I might recognize it. So, but you'll have to get some, bring some different people that um, don't know nothing about what they're going to be listening to and, and really ask them which one they like. But so far, I'm liking it a lot. I, there's still quite a few improvements I would like to make on this DAC and uh, I'll go through that in a, in a second. So, uh, so what kind of improvements uh, I would like to make is, uh, remember I said this is running on three uh, ultra capacitors and I need five. Right now the dual mono board, it's only supplied by one uh, power supply and it has three uh, inputs for power supplies for left channel, right channel and the main Board. So I would like to supply those with three separate uh, power supplies uh, and then we might hear better probably imaging and definition. Uh, so that's going to make five of these big guys. <laughs> you need lots of room. It's going to get, it's going to be a big DAC. This is not going to be a, a small DAC. Uh, second is uh, right now the, all these uh, uh, pure uh, boards and the ultra capacitor are supplied by a switching power supplies. The switching power supply charges the ultra capacitors for just about a couple uh, minutes every three hours or four hours, depends on how much your consumption is. So it doesn't uh, doesn't go off very often. And in the meantime, it'll be running on whatever supply you, you're giving. Uh, but what I didn't, but right now they're supplied by switching power supplies, just like regular uh, laptop uh, computer power supplies and uh, I always do a little test I got this little cheap basically it's an amplifier pro that amplifies uh, basically uh, anything with electromagnetic uh, emissions and EMI and you can see uh, the noise basically it's just a very simple crude test but if you test this you can now check this guy Look at this noise. And this one's not as bad. All, uh, all switching power supplies are not the same. Some are extremely noisy like this guy here and some are not. And that's, that could ripple through your whole board and your whole area. It's, it's, I really don't like some of those noisy switching power supplies. Some of them are really good, they, but not all of them. The majority are really bad. So here I go again, I have one here, one here, and one here. This one hums a lot. And this one has that tick, 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 tick thing. This one's probably one of the better ones. Look at that. It goes right through the cord all the way, all the way to the top. So instead of these, basically switching power supplies. I'm going to be using, uh, I already bought uh, some uh, O-ring uh, transformers, there's three of them. They're gonna be, and each one of them can have a dual. So these can supply six, I need five. And uh, so they will supply the entire uh, DAC, 
The other thing, uh, I got some metal cases uh, that are still have the padding on them, so they look funny. Uh, so all these ultra capacitors are going to go into that big one here, and uh, the uh, all the DAC parts are going to go into the this top uh, case as well. So they're going to be all uh, separated. And uh, basically the dirty uh, Raspberry Pi will be also encased in its own case. And the, uh, uh, the uh, FIFO Pi and all that will be another case. So they're going to be like double case between that and the other one. So we're going to reduce the noise down to basically nothing as much as close to nothing anyway. For those of you who'd like to see like what does a case like this do to the noise. For example, if you see this. And here, hardly anything. So that's what these metal cases do. They drown all the noise down. Uh, also, while you guys looking from this angle, the uh, Raspberry Pi, because it consumes a lot of power, I cannot run it from ultra capacitors. So it actually has its own uh, its own power supply that runs through. Uh, Ian makes those beautiful uh, linear supplies uh, that you could also get. I'll put a link below, and also goes to another ultra smaller ultra capacitor bank and then goes into Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that one has its own uh, uh, supply which keeps running continuously. It's not ultra pure like these, but because it's running for the Raspberry Pi, which is already the dirty side anyway, it's not as critical. It's always about how the sound when passes to the next stage where we want to get the best uh, power solar. But nevertheless, this is still a very, very low jitter uh, very low, I mean, very low noise uh, power, linear power supply. I hope everyone enjoyed this uh, video. I'll keep you up to date on the, what's uh, coming up. Uh, as uh, uh, this project keeps going, I've got to come up with a cool uh, design to get it all properly uh, dialed in with all the casing and we get some of the best sound, then we can test it properly and have some other people test it as well and, and come up with the best sound possible. Uh, please subscribe and give me thumbs up if you can. Uh, that's what keeps the channel going. And I uh, hope to see you guys in uh, next time. If you guys are interested in uh, seeing my speakers, I'll put a link uh, above about, uh, about those if anybody interested in those. All right, take care guys. See you next time.